a very dear Jesuit friend of mine in his last days on this earth was in our infirmary. I would go to see him often. One particular day when I went to see him, he was more excited than he usually was, which he always was when I came to see him. And he called me close and he says, Errol, I want to tell you a secret. And I said, what is it, father? And he smiled and said to me, God does not forgive. I was taken aback for a moment. And I responded by saying, what do you mean, father? Look at the texts in the New Testament. Have you read the prodigal father, where the father forgives the son, even though the son does not complete his act of contrition? Have you not read where Jesus says, I have come to call sinners? Have you not read the proclamation of Jesus in Galilee when he said, God first loves have you not read 1 john 4 19 where john says we love because god loved us first he let me finish and then he smiled and said to me because god does not condemn and i was further taken aback because i thought this was a fantastic insight which he had given me so many years ago after that meeting whenever i went to see him until the day he was taken up by god he would always say this to me because he had forgotten that he had told me this and would say god does not forgive and in order to keep the banter going, I would say to him, what do you mean, Father? Have you not read the prodigal son? Have you not read the proclamation of Jesus? And he would smile and say to me, because God does not condemn. And I said to myself, if this is all that he remembers, it is enough. God does not forgive because God does not condemn. The gospel text of today speaks not of the forgiveness of God, but of the non-condemnation of God. In the gospel text of today, Jesus has no need to forgive the woman caught in adultery because he has not condemned her. It is important to note, however, that Jesus also does not condemn the condemners of the woman, he condemns no one. Many fanciful interpretations have given to the action of Jesus writing on the ground when he is asked the question about what must be done with the woman. While some think that Jesus was writing the sins of the bystanders, Others think that he did not hear the question or that he was taking time to come up with an adequate response. Still others think that Jesus was overcome by shame and embarrassment at the question and so bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground so as to hide his face from those who were asking the question. However, nothing in the text allows such interpretations and it seems very likely that the reason why Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground was to distance himself from the situation and refuse to play judge. It seemed to him that those who were condemning the woman had already made up their minds. And as John tells us, they asked the question to test him. So Jesus did not want to enter into that controversy. If someone had made up their mind to act, what could Jesus do? Be that as it may, the interlocutors continued to ask him the question. And it is only then that Jesus straightens himself up and says to them that if any one of them has not sinned, they must cast the first stone. But even 
as he says this, he bends down and writes on the ground with his finger a second time. And this time when he bends down and writes with his finger, he knows what he is doing. He knows what is going to happen. He knows that there is not a single one who is without sin. And so he knows that the questioners will go away. He does not want to embarrass them, but more importantly, he does not want to condemn them. He allows them to leave with their heads held high. And then Jesus is left alone with the woman. And the words of Jesus to the woman are, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she responds by saying, no one, Lord. Jesus does not tell her that he forgives her. Instead, Jesus says, then, neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin again. He challenges this woman to repentance, to metanoia without forgiveness. He challenges this woman to a new way of life, to a new vision, to a new way of looking by not condemning her. This love which Jesus manifests to the woman and manifests to everyone was a love that was unconditional and is narrated in the first reading of today when through the words of Isaiah, the Lord promised to people a new thing. This was because the former things were not remembered anymore. They were forgiven and erased. The new thing which the Lord will do is to make a way in the wilderness. The Lord will travel like a shepherd on this way and will lead his flock to safety and to nourishment. This is also the new thing that Paul is convinced he has received and because of which all the old or former things are of no consequence whatsoever. They are to be counted as refuse when compared with the gain of knowing and experiencing the unconditional love of God, which is made manifest, made tangible in the person of Jesus. This is also made explicit in the words Jesus spoke to the woman caught in adultery when he says to her, do not sin again. He is not stating what is required for acquittal. He is acquitting freely and without reservation. This unconditional love has to become the starting point for a new life that every one of us, beginning with the woman, is challenged to live. The readings of today are thus a consolation to everyone, no matter to which category we may belong. If we are like the, those who condemn the woman in the gospel story of today, quick to condemn others and point fingers at them, the readings are saying to us that God will not condemn us for condemning, that God will not point a finger at us. We have not been condemned for this sin and have been forgiven unconditionally. If we identify with the woman in the gospel text of today, then to us too, the message is that there is no sin because it has not been condemned and we have been forgiven unconditionally. However, no matter with whom we identify, the next step after having experienced the forgiveness of God in Jesus is, like Paul, to forget what lies behind, to forget what lies in the past and to strain on to what lies ahead. And what lies ahead is only the unforgiving, the, the, only the forgiving and total unconditional love of God who remains and will always be unconditional love. Will we forget what lies behind? Will we realize that we have not been condemned and so will we learn not to 